Welcome back to the second section of the three-part tutorial on how to increase the performance of a Windows computer. In this section, we'll be doing the equivalent of removing excess paper from a filing cabinet and tidying it up into a continuous section. This is known as defragmenting and is probably the most effective part of this tutorial and will show the most instant effects. First off, we're going to need to delete all of the excess data that we no longer need. You'll be really surprised at how much stuff Windows has in temporary storage. Nine times out of ten, you ain't going to need any of this. So to remove it, we're going to use a very famous piece of software called CCleaner, or Crap Cleaner for short. So this is arguably the quickest way to delete temporary files and probably the easiest to use. So after installing it, this is what we get up and you have options galore in here and I'm just gonna quickly talk you through what they all do so it comes in sections and what's checked is basically what's going to be deleted you've also got the second tab applications which is more down to stuff you've installed like Firefox and Google Chrome and um, I myself generally keep cookies unchecked and sometimes internet cache because I want my um, passwords on there and stuff so I can quickly log into websites. I'm, I'm a little bit lazy. So I just keep that unchecked and all you have to do is click analyze and it tells you how much can be removed by doing this and run. If you click run it analyzes first so don't worry. And then it will say this will permanently delete files from your system so just be aware of that, you ain't going to get it back unless we do a little bit of uh, recovery, which I'll do in the next video sometime later on. So 432 megabytes has been removed. That's quite a lot for temporary files, and you naturally never see all the stuff that's in here. So we've removed quite a big chunk without doing much at all. So the second tab of this is the registry part. Now, when programs uninstall or install, they often leave like muddy footprints in the configuration and information database that we call the registry. These really, really often slow down the opening of some programs when it tries to look for things that aren't there anymore. So, what we do is scan for all of these issues and the muddy footprints that are in the registry. And once it picks those up, usually what it does is just deletes them straight from it. So we click scan for issues. Let's see what comes up. So we just click fix selected issues and backup change to the registry unless you're feeling adventurous. Put it in somewhere that we'll know. And call this backup. If I can actually type right. And if you look, most of these solutions delete the registry value. Delete the registry key, value, value, value key. Fix all. And there we go. That's uh, a lot of uh, the other crap that's gone. And these will make programs start faster. And so there'll be less errors so it doesn't have to do as much. That's basically all we need for crap cleaner. So the next step in this video is to defragment. Now what this basically means is it stacks files up and squeezes them together and removes the fragmentation of files so files what they tend to do is split up so it could be just a word document or something like that but you may find that one part of it goes to one side of the hard drive another part of it goes to the other side and it takes twice as long in order to read the same file so Windows has this built-in defragmenter and it works pretty well however it is a little bit sluggish and does more than necessary but what we're going to use instead is a little bit more sophisticated defragler and it comes from the same company who makes CCleaner so we know it's pretty good now if we open this up this is what we see and we click analyze on one of our disks and it takes a look at what we have on there and kind of represents it for us. So now it tells us what we've got on our system. And if we have a look at the drive map, it tells us what's what. 
and uh, yeah, th so this drive is mainly clean. It's got um, got a lot of blue, and there's the page file that we were talking about earlier. And when we make the page file bigger, it can expand beyond its limits and fragment. So we'll talk about that later. And then we've got a couple of fragmented files at the end there for no reason. Your drive may look a lot more red than this because I defragment quite regularly. So you can either do this the quick way or the long way. And the quicker it's done, the less cleaning is done. But I'll talk through all your options after I've shown the method. So we're going to just click defrag here. And once it's gone through, then <coughs> we'll see that everything is a lot more shifted and we'll see a lot less red. What else we need to do though is because this page file is probably not in one piece on your system we need to fix that. Now uh, if you're on Windows XP you can kind of skip this and I'll show you that program in a second but I can't use it because I'm on Windows 7. Now the page file can't normally be defragmented because Windows uses it non-stop and you can't rearrange it. It's just like trying to take a wheel off a car when it's spinning and unless you want to get your hands chopped off you you won't take it off just don't go there right so what we do instead is remove it restart it then put it back on again so if this file I don't know let's say three of these chunks are in here somewhere and the other three are over here then what we do is by removing it it will put it here all with those seven blobs and they'll all be in one piece and if it's in one piece then the hard drive can read to it much quicker than if it was scattered about so here's how we do that right click computer properties advanced system settings or you may not need to do this step if you're on XP performance, advanced, and there's our virtual memory again, our paging file. So, just like we are doing in the last one, all we need to do is set no paging file, and then click set. When we do this, it will tell us to restart. So, as long as we've finished defragmenting, then we just restart as, um, as we would normally. <coughs> when we return, we simply go back there, set it back to our custom size that we set in part one, and it's done. And it will appear just as we see here. So, as I said earlier, you can either do this the quick way or the long way. The quickest way to do it is remove the page file, just as we've seen, or we'll um, defrag the page file in Windows XP. Then you do a quick defrag, and I'll show you one of those in a minute and then we put the page file back. So that's it, remove page file, quick defrag, and then put the page file back. The better way to do it is remove the page file, defrag, put the page file back, and then defrag again. So I'll, I'll give a little representation of this. Now uh, onto our final one, the best one to do would be defrag, page file, <coughs> uh, defrag again, put the page file back, then defrag again. So I hope you see the pattern with this uh, defragging stuff. All you need to do is remove the page file, defrag, put the page file back on, defrag, do something else, defrag, have a coffee, defrag and uh, you keep going on but once you've sorted out your page file once it's in a nice regular shape and you don't mind it being a little bit scattered from the rest you see there's a lot of blank space there you don't really need to sort it out ever again and all you need to do is just maintain and defrag every month or so or even more frequently is uh, ideal uh, and that's after you get rid of your stuff with C Cleaner because you do get quite a lot of temporary stuff quite quickly. Now, um, also that uh, quick defrag thing on our quickest way 
can be done by clicking this arrow and then you qu uh, click the quick defrag section so we can do that on this drive which is fairly defragmented anyhow and probably isn't a fair test to be honest but it goes a lot faster than doing it normally and look how many files are being done every second done that was quick and it's pretty much uh, blew across the board it doesn't do as good a job as defrag of course because defrag really gets in there and sorts out the nitty gritty details so yeah that's how you do it and I'll just put a list of the quickest better and best ways because that's probably useful to you but that's all there is in this video and I'll see you in the next video I'll be explaining how to alter the startup of your computer if you're experiencing sluggish startups and we'll tweak the small things that add up to make a stable system see you there